Hi students welcome to e-learning today we are going to do character sketches from the novel The Story of My Life Helen Keller. Helen Keller was an American author, political activist and lecturer who was born on June 27, 1880 at Tuscumbia, a little town in northern Alabama. She lost her ability to see and hear at the age of 19 months due to illness. The world became dark for her but soon her teacher came and enlightened her path. Her teacher, Miss Sullivan taught her to communicate and helped in learning many great things. Helen was a great lover of nature and studied mostly with nature. She traveled a lot as she had desire to see and experience new things. She liked the company of others also. She made many friends in her journey. She learned various subjects with the help of her teacher. She became weak when her first writing was regarded as plagiarism but she soon overcame. She never let her physical disabilities obstruct her in path of success. Miss Anne Sullivan Miss Anne Sullivan was Helen's teacher and mentor. She came in her life when she was just seven years old. She was sent by the Perkins Institute for Blind. The day arrival of Miss Sullivan is the most important for Helen as she opened the gate of information to her. She guided Helen through all phases of her life. Helen experienced many parts of nature with her. Miss Sullivan taught her to communicate by spelling the words on her hand. Miss Sullivan was herself a partially sighted and understood all the difficulties faced by a blind person. She was a durable woman and had a great patience. She also her subjects like arithmetic, history, geography, zoology etc. in playful manner. She also helped Helen in learning speaking. Together they spent a lot of good times. Arthur H. Keller Arthur H. Keller was father of Helen Keller who was a captain in the Confederate Army. He was editor of a newspaper. He was brave, loving and indulgent person. He was good hunter and storyteller. He was quite close to his family. He only left his family when he went to hunt. He was hospitable to a fault and seldom came home without bringing a guest. He loved gardening and used to lead Helen from tree to tree and from vine to vine. He used to spell words into her daughter, Helen's hand and made her to repeat them. He was in sorrow seeing her daughter helpless. He consulted many doctors to get the proper treatment. He felt relief when he found a proper teacher for her daughter. He died in the summer of 1896. Mildred Keller Mildred Keller was Helen's younger sister. Before her birth Helen used to get all the attention from her parents but after Mildred's birth things changed which made Helen jealous of her. When they grew up, they became friends. However, she could not understand Helen's finger language. Once at the fern quarry, they get lost in woods. Mildred pointed towards the trestle and they walked over it. They climbed a moving train and returned to their cottage. This shows her alert behavior. Martha Washington Martha Washington was daughter of the cook of Keller's family. She became Helen's companion in her early days. She understood Helen's signs. She was a mischievous girl. Helen always dominated her and made her do what she wanted to do. She submitted her to Helen because she didn't want to fight with Helen. She used to spend a lot of time in the kitchen with Helen kneading dough balls, making ice cream, grinding coffee, quarreling over the cake bowl and feeding hens and turkeys. She also used to go to egg hunting in the long grass with Helen. Kate Keller Kate Keller was the mother of Helen Keller. She was second wife of Arthur H. Keller who was much elder to her. She was tall, fair complexioned and had blonde hair and blue eyes. She was very supportive and cooperative. She was intelligent, well read and had a good memory. She understood crude signs made by Helen in her early illness days. She loved her daughter very much and took a great care of her. She was a hard-working woman and did everything for her family. When she read the account of Laura Bridgman, a deaf and blind girl who still got educated by Dr. Howe and Charles Dickens' American Notes, she gained a new hope for Helen that she might be educated. 
However, Dr. Howe died long ago and his methods probably died with him. She had positive attitude towards the life. Mr. Michael Anagos Mr. Michael Anagos was the director of the Perkins Institution for the Blind in Boston. He was the one who had found out Miss Sullivan as a teacher and a companion for Helen. After Helen joined the institution, Mr. Anagnos became a good friend of hers. Helen dedicated the things she wrote to him during those years. But after the publishing of The Frost King, Anagnos blamed Helen for plagiarism and terminated their friendship. Even though he had known Helen for years, he misunderstood her. After the publishing of The Story of My Life, Mr. Anagnos wrote to the editor that he had supported Helen during her investigation and trials. But their friendship was never restored. Dr. Alexander Graham Bell. He was the inventor of the telephone and a teacher of the deaf. Helen dedicated her autobiography to Dr. Alexander Graham Bell, and spent much time with him throughout her life. Dr. Bell was the one who took Helen to the World's Fair for the first time. Mr. Arthur Gilman Mr. Arthur Gilman was the principal of the Cambridge School for Young Ladies. He was a generous person who learned to use manual alphabet to have a conversation with Helen. He was very serious about his students and cared deeply about Helen's education, but when he reduced her course load and extended her time at the school following her illness, Helen's mother withdrew her and put her in private tutoring. Merton S. Keith Keith was an instructor in Cambridge who carried over saw Helen's preparation for Radcliffe after she withdrew from the Cambridge school. He instructed Helen in algebra. Greek, Latin, and geometry. Bishop Brooks Brooks was a very joyful person in Helen's life who told her to think beyond the boundaries of caste and religion. He taught Helen that love is a universal religion. Mr. William Endicott, a friend of Helen's who lived near Boston at Beverly Farms, Miss Sarah Fuller. The teacher who began teaching Helen to speak by allowing her to feel the movements of her own lips and tongue. Helen took eleven lessons with Miss Fuller. A friend with whom Helen and Miss Sullivan stayed during their summer at Brewster. Mrs. Hopkins read many books to Helen, one of which was presumably the Frost Fairies. Mr. John P. Spaulding, a close friend of Helen's who died around the same time as her father, Mr. J. E. Chamberlain, a friend of Helen's, at whose home they stayed during their months in Rentham, Massachusetts. Dr. Edward Everett Hale a close friend of Helen's, to whom she wrote letters often. John Albert Macy, editor of The Story of My Life, and a close friend of Miss Sullivan's and Helen's during Helen's time at Radcliffe. He was a professor of English at Harvard.